Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for uh, joining us for this uh, next installment of uh, Challenge Hat uh, here at Soldiers Memorial, or, or at least uh, virtually today and for the time being. Uh, I'm Mark Sunlove. I'm the director here at Soldiers Memorial, and we have a very special presentation uh, for you today. And so thank you for taking the time out of your day to, to be with us. Um, and just to repeat, uh, safety is a top priority for the Missouri Historical Society and thus nearly all of our programming right now is virtual. Uh, however, the museums are open, both the Missouri History Museum up in Forest Park and us here at Soldiers Memorial downtown, we're open Wednesday through Sunday. Uh, we do have several safety precautions in place and we would love for you to visit if you feel safe. Um, Advanced reservations are required to visit all of the Missouri Historical Society locations, and you can find that information at mohistory, M-O-H-I-S-T-O-R-Y dot O-R-G, uh, to plan your visit and reserve your free tickets. Um, so just want to uh, make sure that you're aware that that is available. Um, just to quickly mention a few details about how today's program will run, it'll be roughly about 30, 40 minute presentation followed by about 10 to 15 minutes of Q&A. Uh, so please uh, uh, be mindful of questions you may have and we'll, we'll get to those at the end. You can submit those questions through the Q&A button, uh, which is at the in your toolbar, which is towards the bottom of your screen. And we'll do our best to answer all the questions that are presented, but uh, we may uh, get squeezed on time, but we'll, we'll try to get through everything. Today's presentation is being recorded, so if you'd like to view it again or if you'd like to share it with other folks, uh, you can certainly do that. It'll be uh, uh, sometime after the uh, presentation here, it will be posted and recorded on our Missouri Historical Society YouTube channel. Uh, and also, your feedback is always important to us, and we would appreciate it if you could answer a few questions for us after the program. A toolbox survey will, will open up in a tab in your browser after you close uh, today's uh, Zoom session. It'll pop up for you there. So keep an eye on out for that when it arrives. And uh, if you could complete that, it'd be extremely uh, thankful. I want to uh, talk a little bit about uh, the presentation today, uh, Gold Star Mothers Sacrifice in Action. Uh, Mike Benso, our military and firearms curator, will be leading this uh, discussion and presentation. Um, and we're really uh, especially honored to have uh, Susie Moore and Mary Jane Keepy, both Gold Star Mothers here in the St. Louis area, um, to join Mike uh, after his short kind of history lesson on the Gold Star Mothers um, and, and how that evolved and its role here at Soldiers Memorial and then a discussion with both Susie and Mary Jane will follow that. So we're extremely honored and pleased uh, that both of these uh, very special women uh, are able to join us today. There's a, uh, there's a statue here at Soldiers Memorial. There's four outdoors. Uh, one of them is called Sacrifice and it's a mother uh, holding a young baby in her arms. And it's a reminder uh, to all of us that when we go to conflict and when we uh, you know, when our military is put in harm's way, uh, there's always the risk that we are going to use, lose uh, those who we love uh, the most and the dearest, and that's the, the youth and the, and the uh, children of our society. Um, so there's, in my mind, there's, there's nobody more special than Gold Star mothers and Gold Star families who have lost the loved ones in service and made that ultimate sacrifice for us in our country. It's uh, extremely humbling um, to, uh, to be uh, in the presence of, of these women and, and families who have made that sacrifice for all of us. Um, so thank you um, uh, for, mm -hmm. for being here and for uh, mm -hmm. spending some time with us. At this time, I'm gonna turn it over to Mike and he's going to start our presentation. Thank you. Uh, so much, Mark. Appreciate the introduction. And I um, want to welcome everybody here uh, this afternoon for another uh, round of our uh, Challenge Chat program. Uh, as many of you know, uh, we've been doing all of these virtually uh, since the uh, pandemic kind of hit 
and uh, really changed our programming. But uh, it's been really great because we've been able to invite people from uh, farther away uh, than what we were doing uh, before on site with the programming. Uh, and we're also utilizing some um, technology today to bring in some other folks. As Mark mentioned, uh, the latter part of the program will speak with a couple of Gold Star mothers uh, who are, uh, are dialing in uh, to join us today. And so um, we'll get started with the program. Here's just a quick overview of what we're going to try and cover uh, in our uh, hour-long program. I'm going to offer a little brief history of Gold Star Mothers. Uh, we'll talk about um, symbols and icons of the gold stars that you'll find throughout Soldiers Memorial. And I'll highlight by showing a few pieces in our collection uh, that are related to uh, Gold Star Mothers as well. And then, as we mentioned, we'll talk with Susie and Mary Jane, and we'll open it up for questions uh, from all of you, and that you can type those in into the uh, Q&A box on your Zoom screen. So I'd like to start with uh, the origin uh, of the term gold star. And really, it, it begins in 1917 as the United States had joined World War I and an uh, infantry veteran uh, from um, Cleveland, Ohio, uh, R.L. Quisner, as a person that actually designed and patented what he called a service flag or kind of became known as a blue star flag uh, that would mark the service of family members serving in World War I. And this was a banner that was designed to hang in the window of a home of a military family uh, that would allow everybody uh, to see that shared sacrifice among the entire community. And so as you see in this example here, uh, there are three blue stars, which would indicate that there were three members of that family or household uh, that were serving in the war. And then um, if the unfortunate happened and one of those uh, that was serving uh, were to die while in service, the blue star would be sewn over with a gold star. And that's the first use and real origin of that term gold star in terms of uh, gold star mothers, gold star families. Uh, it originates with these blue star and then some gold star banners. You'll see an example of a, a gold star banner uh, here in just a few minutes. But these, we have a number of these in the collection and, um, and they're probably quite familiar to many of you. So there was a group, uh, kind of the first organization of mothers uh, of those that had died in World War I was formed in August of 1918. So before the war even ended, and they got together as American war mothers. And some of them had already lost children to the war, but others were just mothers. They were sort of blue star mothers, sons were serving. And they got uh, started to share information about food conservation. It's really kind of where it got its start. All the efforts to um, preserve the, the food stocks and the um, crops that were growing, and then ways that people could sort of ration what they have so that there was enough food at home and then enough to be able to be sent abroad to feed the soldiers. And that effort was led by a woman named Alice French of Indiana. Uh, and then that kind of spurred a lot of local uh, organizations that did similar activities, but also in conjunction um, with um, the ladies auxiliary, so, such as the Veterans of Foreign Wars that were started in 1913 and the newly formed American Legion by 1919. And then as the war ended and there were so many soldiers that had died overseas, uh, the issue of burials for those American servicemen and women um, was really essentially settled by families deciding whether they wanted to have their remains of their children or spouses um, to be reburied in new cemeteries that were being built uh, across France or have them return to the U.S. for local burials. And about 46,000, a little more than that, uh, chose to bring their loved ones home to the United States. And nearly 32,000 remained overseas. And so those uh, cemeteries, people were initially buried closer to where they, they fell in battle and, and small cemeteries that were created um, sort of instinctively during the war. But then they were consolidated and put into a group of cemeteries across France where they still are buried today. And that's gonna come up here in just a, a, a second about how that connects in uh, with the Gold Star Mother's story. There was a group, uh, local groups that sprung up all around the country and even here in Missouri 
uh, ladies that were committed to tracking the names and the service of Missourians who died in the Great War uh, and wanted to preserve those names. And they would form, eventually the local group would form a group called the National Society of 1917 World War Registrars. That started here in St. Louis. And these registrars were women that were organizing those names and organizing those histories of those uh, that had served and particularly those that had died during the conflict. And they also had much grander ideas. They um, conceived this initial idea of uh, what we kind of call an honorary highway plan. And their concept was that in across the country, each state that was building new highways, this is post-war and money was coming in for that type of thing. And as new highways were being built, they wanted to have those dedicated as gold star highways. And they were very successful in doing that here in Missouri. In fact, the first sort of state route linking Kansas City and um, St. Louis was known as a Gold Star Highway. And then they wanted to expand that into other states. And so they did that through this Gold Star Highway program. Uh, I think ultimately there were more than 30 states that, that did components of that, but they eventually ran into some bureaucratic issues. And then sort of the Great Depression took over and, and a lot of that kind of fell, fell um, less of a priority, shall we say, uh, for the, the, the states themselves. And so they turned their actions toward um, the Gold Star Court of Honor, uh, which many of you are familiar with, if you're familiar with, uh, with the visiting its soldiers, and you'll see an example of one of these. But the, uh, the registrars, the World War registrars, those ladies started a plaque program and on Kings Highway, on North Kings Highway, um, they installed a plaque for each person who died in World War I from the St. Louis area. They also planted a sycamore tree. And those stood in place on North Kings Highway until 1962, uh, when the highway for what now is um, I-70 up there, the Mark Twain Expressway, when that went in. And then in 1982, there was additional widening of Kings Highway. And so that median um, was uh, reduced, and in so doing, they, uh, the, the construction crews in the city that was organizing that actually damaged and destroyed some of those plaques. Many of the plaques, a majority of the plaques were saved by individuals and by um, veterans organizations. Uh, and uh, some of those actually uh, were kept for years and years until 2012 uh, when um, a new monument was created at Jefferson Barracks National Cemetery uh, that was largely led by the folks from American Legion Post 15 here locally, um, they pulled as many of those together and put those into that permanent memorial. And there are some examples of these in other museum collections. You'll see an example of one here uh, in just a moment from uh, Soldier's Memorial. After that, the group American Gold Star Mothers Incorporated, which is uh, where the uh, Susie and Mary Jane are members of that organization, they actually got founded in 1928, and they were established for the mothers of, who lost children in service in the armed forces during World War I. And it, it kind of, uh, there's, there's some interesting history about these groups, but it was a little bit of a dispute with them and the American war mothers. Sometimes the dispute centered on who was eligible and um, different personalities got involved, people's memberships got revoked, all that kind of thing. So there was a, a, a bit of a, um, uh, a dispute with the members of the American War Mothers, and so this other group got started, the American Gold Star Mothers, and um, that's a group that has really survived and, uh, and done um, great service for mothers uh, who have lost children uh, to war and to military service. They were, um, I mentioned, started in 1928, incorporated in 1929, and received a congressional charter in 1984. Soon after they started, one of their big efforts was to secure funding and the establishment of a program to provide trips to mothers or widows of soldiers who were buried overseas to visit those graves. So if you remember those World War I burials, those families that chose to leave uh, their children in France and be buried in those cemeteries, then there was a program to create these pilgrimages. And there were about 17,000 women that were deemed eligible, and this was an all expense paid trip by the government, for them to go to France and see um, where their, their sons, or in some cases, their husbands were buried. Ult ultimately, there were um, just under 7,000 women who made that pilgrimage. And that program ended at the end of October of 1933. 
And you'll see here's one of the ribbons that went to uh, Mrs. Pittman uh, from Missouri who went uh, as part of one of those pilgrimages. And so, as you can imagine, um, as the America got more involved in different wars, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and the Gulf Wars, membership in the organization sort of expanded and contracted as thousands of young men and women lost their lives in military service. Uh, for many of the mothers, they found the social support and service of the organization to be an important part of their grieving and healing process. And unfortunately, the conflicts that the U.S. is involved even today through the war on terrorism, various campaigns around the globe <clears throat> have continued to create new Gold Star Mothers. The Gold Star Mothers, uh, uh, American Gold Star Mothers organization continues today to offer help and hope to their fellow families of the fallen. And shortly we'll talk uh, with a couple of those. I wanted to point out that soul, the Gold Star symbolism is at the very foundation of Soldiers Memorial. Since the building's construction in 1938, visitors uh, can find Gold Star icons throughout this remarkable building. You'll see here the Gold Star mosaic in the loggia, which sits above the cenotaph. Um, sometimes people who come in to the loggia, that area between the two galleries as soldiers are drawn into the cenotaph or uh, entries into the building and they forget to look up above, but you'll see this remarkable uh, mosaic uh, that has a really beautiful uh, central uh, gold star and then in a sea of smaller gold stars. And this was all renovated and restored as part of the um, renovations uh, prior to 2018 and the reopening of Soldiers Memorial. Another uh, subtle little spot where you can see the gold star uh, iconography is in the stairwell. This is in the uh, stairwell on the west gallery side. And as you look up, you see this great um, sort of spiraling up to the uh, upper floor, the second level actually is Soldier's Memorial. But if you look down, whoops, not sure what happened right there. If you look down, uh, you'll see at the very base here, and I'll click one more. There you go, you can see a little more closely another version of a gold star at the bottom of that stairwell in the West Gallery. We have a room on the second floor, one of our uh, several meeting rooms available at Soldiers Memorial uh, that's dedicated uh, to the Gold Star Mothers. And um, Mark was able to snap a few great shots for me the other day uh, uh, of the room and the space there uh, that we have. And you notice we've just got some new graphic panels that actually help with um, the acoustics in the space. And one of those is that picture that I just showed you of the gold star above uh, the cenotaph. Additionally, in the second floor, there's the Taylor Auditorium. And up on uh, the dais there on the wall, you'll see there's a trio of gold stars uh, in wood that are inlaid that are just really beautiful elements within that space. And then uh, as you go through the galleries uh, in the East or West gallery, you'll see on the low, on the floor embedded in the terrazzo, there's that star pattern again with the circles. And um, in this time we're living in with COVID, uh, Mark noticed that these stars and these circles happen to be the uh, six foot required or recommended distance apart. Uh, so they serve uh, even as a guide star for our visitors today to keep safe uh, as they visit uh, the museum. So I'm gonna real briefly uh, highlight just a few pieces. There's over 550 items that are associated or have gold star associations uh, in our collections. And this is both the Soldiers Memorial Collection as well as the Missouri Historical Society. Uh, so I'm gonna click through and show you just a few of those. Here you'll see another example in really great shape of one of those gold star banners. You can see how it was designed to be hung uh, in the window. We have a um, membership, an honorary membership to the National Society of the 1917 World War Registrars. This is that group that first started. You see the gold star iconography used on, on their documents. To the right there is one of those circular plaques. Those are about 10 inches or so uh, in diameter um, in full that were lined over a thousand of those up on North Kings Highway. Um, the cenotaph that sits below that gold star mosaic in the loggia 
lists the names of 1,075 members of the St. Louis community who died in World War I. And you see a couple of them here, William Massman on the right and Alexander Spinker on the left. And we have a nice collection of photographs, not of everybody, but of, of most of the uh, names that are listed. And those were denoted um, by families that supported or people that organized those photos years ago with that gold star right on um, the image and right on the, the prints that we have. The um, uh, Alexander Skinker, of course, was uh, recognized uh, for um, earning the Congressional Medal of Honor for his service. And to the right, you'll see um, a sign for the Gold Star Court of Honor, uh, which is reflective of those plaques, and then down below the Gold Star Highways. So that organization in the center there is that National Society of the Registry, um, founded in, in 1920, and there's their two big programs that they really worked on. Also, you'll see um, some really um, more practical items that are associated with the Gold Star Mothers, the playing cards and the bingo cards and chips and the dice from the top row there. Um, those are all from Soldiers Memorial and those were used by Gold Star Mothers when they would meet at Soldiers um, for social gatherings. It was a, a big part of the healing and building a community uh, for them were the various social gatherings that they had. There's a set of um, stamps that you see in the lower left from 1948, a federal stamp that honored uh, Gold Star Mothers. And we have a group of those three cent stamps when you used to be able to mail a letter for three cents. There's a gavel. Uh, we have a couple of gavels from the Gold Star Group. This, I believe, was uh, Anna uh, Kruitz's gavel. And um, I don't know, we'll have to ask Susie and Mary Jane if they still need gavels to keep those Gold <laughs> Star Mothers in line. <laughs> um, the, uh, there's a coin here that's more recently presented, kind of the challenge coin uh, style uh, that uh, was presented um, to um, the superintendent at Social Memorial, to uh, Linnea Magnuson uh, from a Gold Star Mother. And then on the right, you'll see the, the cape to the right, and then above the, the hat, sort of the envelope cap or overseas cap as uh, uh, most uh, uh, men wear them. Uh, for the Gold Star Mothers, and those belong to Susie Moore, who uh, we're delighted has uh, joined us, and we'll be able to talk with Susie here in just a moment. And then I just wanted to recognize how, how pleased and honored uh, Soldiers Memorial is to work with the local St. Louis chapter of American Gold Star Mothers and Gold Star Families in sharing the story of their family sacrifice. Here you'll see in this um, MHS photograph, uh, the local chapter members I think includes both uh, of our guests today. They're leading the Pledge of Allegiance at the grand reopening ceremonies uh, of the memorial in November of 2018. So with that, I'm going to see if we have, I think I see we have uh, Susie on the line. And I hope Mary Jane might be there. Uh, Mary Jane is on the line. I believe, Mary Jane, if you press star six on your phone, you should be able to uh, unmute yourself and uh, and hopefully uh, we can we can hear you. It's showing that uh, you're still muted. Susie, you're there, right? We can hear you okay? Yes, I can hear you fine, and you, I've learned a lot. <laughs> That's great. Yes. I probably, I probably got a few things wrong, too, so hopefully you'll get me set straight. Well, not in public. <laughs> Very good. Well, maybe um, we'll see. Well, let's start with you, Susie, and, and hopefully we'll get um, Mary Jane's audio clicked in so we're able to, uh, to hear her with the phone. Um, uh, let's introduce, and I should let everybody know that both Susie and Mary are joining us by phone, so that's why we don't have the video uplink for them. Um, they're both local, um, but some of the technology things are happening. This is an easier way to go, so hopefully we'll pull this together. So Susie, maybe you could tell us just a little bit about yourself and about your son, uh, Captain Carl Halsey Moore. Okay, uh, a little bit about myself. I, I have seen nine decades, okay? Uh, you know, I'm I'm a little bit old, so forgive me if I flub. Uh, I was um, uh, I, well. I, I I came to St. Louis in 1954 uh, on a job at Barnes Hospital, and uh, that of course led to uh, meeting my husband, and we got married in 1957. 
And uh, Carl was born on April 14th, 1961. And he has a brother who was born in 1965. Carl was a bright student. He, he loved Boy Scouts. He was an Eagle Scout and then Explorer. And uh, he was just simply smart. And he, attend, he had a, an ROTC scholarship at MIT. And he was, uh, of course, he majored in mechanical engineering and German. And as a result, he ended up in Nuremberg, Germany. And uh, in, uh, well, in and then, well, he did fine. And then in, um, he, he developed a, a brain aneurysm in, uh, I guess it was a, in the end of October and uh, towards the end of October, and it, I'm sad to say, but it was not taken seriously and it was mistreated in, in the military hospital, okay? And uh, as a result, he died on All Saints Day, November 1st, 1986. The, um, I guess you call it a brain bleed or an aneurysm, and... Mm -hmm. uh, as a, as a result, I, I guess I spent about a year, you know, talking to various things, you know, and there were investigations and all the rest. But we finally decided to let it go, and uh, uh, the Goldster mothers contacted me, and they embraced me, took care of me, and as a result, I think I was valuable to them as well because I had a car and I could drive these little old ladies <laughs> to wherever they needed to go. And that was my first experience with the American Gold Star mothers. There were World War II mothers, there were, and of course Vietnam mothers were the, the big ones. We had one Korean War mother, but she was already in a nursing home. And... Uh, I, I just, I myself got a lot from the mothers, okay, and in a small way, I also felt very indebted to them and have devoted my time. Yeah. Well, okay. you, yeah, I think you hit on one of those key aspects, Susie, of that it, it was it, it was a mutual relationship that you got yes. something from the Gold Star Mothers, but you also were all giving back. Uh, to yes. each other and to the community, so that, that's great. And I love well, the story about you being the the chauffeur and getting yeah. every everybody to and from the meetings. What did you tell me the other day that you would have to leave for the meeting an hour, hour and a half early, and come home hour oh, and sure. hour and a half late? Yeah, <laughs> and driving them all over the county and the city. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's north and south. You know, <laughs> you know. I'm. You know, we just. We just all did it. I mean, I believe, the, yeah, Francis Turley in the early years, of course, also had a car. And, and uh, you know, and I believe that was almost it. Perhaps <laughs> there was one other person, you know, that had a car. But we all did for each other, you know. That's yeah. how it was. That's great, Susie. We'll stay on the line. We're going we're gonna to ask you some more questions. But I do want to uh, bring in Mary Jane, if I can. I'm going to click right. the slide here. Here we yes. go, Mary Jane, you can hear us okay? Yes, that's fine, thank you. What? Wonderful. Well, Mary Jane, I put up a slide here. Um, it's got your name on it and then that of your son, Lieutenant Kent Michael Keepy. So maybe you could tell us just a little bit about yourself, your family, uh, and, and about Kent. Sure. Um, I have lived in Festus, Missouri most of my life, and I attended Sacred Heart School in Festus, and then on to um, Festus High School after attending one year at, Kirk, at Ursuline Academy in Kirkwood. But I graduated from Festus High School in 1957 and um, worked for a while and then um, got married and had my family. Uh, my, um, my husband Glenn and I have been married for 61 years 
and um, uh, are doing fine. And we had five children and 17 grandchildren and seven great-grandchildren at this time um, who are all doing fine. One of them had the COVID, um, COVID-19, but, but uh, he's doing fine now. Um, and so during um, – then I'll get to Kent here now. As he was growing up, he was 29 when we lost him. Um, Kent attended Jefferson Art 7 Elementary School, which is south of Festus, for eight years, and then he was on to Festus High School and graduated, and he was active in the band, the football, and the baseball, and the scouts, and then he went on to Jefferson Junior College in Hillsboro, Missouri, for two years, um, and then transferred to Missouri Western State University, where he graduated in 1985, and um, he was... He was an agriculture ma- uh, business major, but he decided that was not for him. So he um, signed up for AOCS, and um, and I didn't realize it, but he had told his dad he was very interested in flying. And so he waited for the summer, and sure enough, he got called, and um, we were on our way to Pensacola, Florida, to start him at in the summer session for flight training. Um, He did very well and loved every minute of it. Um, So he went on and um, was stationed at uh, Point Magoo for a while out in California. And uh, then he was uh, in the Golden Dragons on the Midway, USS Midway, and that's where he would fly. Um, and land was on the midway, and he said had some very exciting adventures. I understand. I I used to tell him, don't tell me until you after you land, and then you call and tell me that you did. <laughs> and so, um, uh, anyway, during the um, he was called back to the test and evaluation station when he was in Desert Star. Uh, Desert Shield, I'm sorry. He was in Desert Shield uh, preparing for Desert Storm, but he was called back to the States to uh, be at the Test and Evaluation Center in Point Magoo, and that's where he spent his time um, and would fly uh, quite a bit from there. His accident happened when um, he was supposed to go to another um, base, Another young man was going, a uh, young officer was flying him and a Cessna 210. And they got over the San Gabriel mo- Mountains and the crankshaft broke in the plane. And uh, there was no place to glide, no place to get over. They, it was deep into the mountains. And so at that time, they crashed and they both perished. And of course, that was quite a terrible shock to our family. And, um, he was brought back home then after a week or so. We had a service and everything. And his his commander praised him quite a bit. And um, he said that he was a busy, busy young man, had a lot of energy, charisma, and positive outlook. And he possessed an aggressive spirit, quick intelligence, and a well-rounded sense of humor. And uh, he was always striving for excellence. He was well-known and well-liked, and they saw him as a leader that was going to move up the ladder. But, of course, um, the Lord had different different uh, arrangements for him. So we made it through that, and about two weeks after the funeral, um, I was notified by the American Gold Star Mothers, uh, the chapter in St. Louis, that that um, they would like for me to come and visit with them. Um, I, um, I'll go on and just tell you a little bit about my um, sure. time with them. Um, they were such a dear group, but it was a little early for me at that time when I got my 
my card from them. And so I waited. It was about 1993 before I actually um, got a hold of somebody again. And it's just so happy that Susan Moore was has been my mentor over the years. I love her dearly. And, of course, I'm not the only one. That she's been mentor for a lot of mothers that have come in. And um, um, I just I just can't say enough about her. But anyway, that's that's um, probably all that that uh, I worked at. Um, I returned to school actually uh, for uh, and went through the LPN program at Jefferson College, and then went to work at our local hospital, Jefferson Moore Memorial, and worked about 20 years there. And then I, um, then I decided to stay home and do, do some volunteer work. So I volunteer at Jeff, um, Jefferson Barracks, the, the VA hospital. I'll volunteer there, and um, that is very, very close to me. So uh, anyway, when I got to join the Gold Star Mothers later on, um, they're a wonderful group of ladies. Yeah. And have well, that, helped that, me and ha have helped a lot of other women. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mary Jane. That, that was wonderful because, I mean, you really, I think you hit it is um, you just by your comments, you've demonstrated how important the, the organization uh, is to you and the, the, the camaraderie, you know, having other people that are facing those same challenges um, is, is so important. And I think that was the, right. you mentioned um, needing a little time, you know, right after uh, you lost your yes. son. And, and I think Susie had, had the same situation that it, uh -huh. it had to come, it, you appreciated them reaching out to you, but it had to kind of come on your own time and your own terms when you were ready for that's it. And you were, that's yeah. right. And you were glad that they were And we have found were, that with other there. mothers. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, that's really important. Um, maybe I'll just stick with you for a second here, Mary Jane, while we bounce okay. back and forth a little bit with a couple of questions. Okay. Is there anything that, that you wanted to add about kind of the community of Gold Star Mothers and, and what that means to you or, or how important that is? Um, it's very important. It has been over the years. And um, it, we all have the same, the same hurt. Uh, when we started and have have uh, shared it with each other and um, I think it's really important and we'd like to do that for the newer mothers that come in to you know we want them to feel feel comfortable with us um, to ask us anything you know that we can help them with um, and just just continue you know to keep keep them close to us sure sure Susie, did you have anything you wanted to add about um, what the community of Gold Star Mothers means to you? Well, it obviously has helped me over the years. Uh, you know, I, 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 I tried other groups, of course, at first. I didn't know about Gold Star Mothers. It just didn't do it. But once the mothers, you know, it, it came. But also this, the sense of purpose of helping others was also very important to me at the time that, you know, in your grief, you've got to give, you know, to be able to carry that load. You just have to give. And, uh, uh, you know, at first, of course, it was a communication with the mothers, which it really helped sustain. Then I learned about, hey, I can, we can go work at the USO. And my husband and I, we decided that's what we'll do. So, we we volunteered at the USO at Lambert for about 24 years, hmm. you know, and uh, through that we of course met more people, and uh, that to me was our main volunteering, you know, together, and uh, I I value that time, uh, but the mothers, well even now, well. Even now, as you know, the other day when you were on the phone with me, I immediately, you know, I was interrupted because I need somebody to take me to the dentist next week, <laughs> and one yeah. of our mothers is doing it. It's things like that, you know, that yeah. are just, uh, you know, under, you know. It's come full you circle. Can't describe it. 
you know. Yeah, yeah. It's come full circle, hasn't it? That you yes. you cared for so many, and now that younger generation yeah. they're helping you out when you need help. That's great. They're, they're giving. Oh, did you know that? You know, the other thing that also happened is that this this new group of mothers, most of them were so young, they were still working, most of them. They were all working, and we couldn't meet in the daytime at Soldier's Memorial because of that. <laughs> so somehow they have mig- migrated to my house in the <laughs> evening, and we met there for a number of years. And, of course, COVID has put an end to it, but my table is still wide open for everybody. <laughs> oh, that's so great. Well, yeah. I wonder, um, Susie, you, you hit a little bit on this, but um, in case there was something else you wanted to mention in terms of the services or support um, that you and your fellow Gold Star mothers um, bring to others, things like there are people out there that might be joining us today or know someone, I guess, I guess maybe it's important before we do that to point out that someone becomes a gold star mother when, when they lose their, their son or daughter in, in that military service. But it doesn't necessarily, it's a, it's a different thing to then join an organization or to get involved and engaged. So there are, there are so many thousands of gold star mothers that are out there, but a small mm-hmm. number that, um, that join the organizations and, and participate uh, in that, that social and community uh, experience. So are, there are things that you guys do, I know, beyond helping each other. Um, if, if maybe you could uh, share a couple of those. I, I'm familiar with um, uh, examples of uh, attending the funerals of um, homeless veterans who pass away and how you represent those families uh, that, that aren't able to be there for those soldiers. Yeah. Are there yes, things that like that a, that, that you yeah, that was a very important part of our work there for for a number of years. And I guess, uh, you know, uh, what would happen is we would attend those. And then one of the Gold Star Mothers, who, you know, very often it would be the, um, whoever was held the highest office would then receive the flag, you know, for the uh, the person and many of those flags were put in were given away to different organizations you know for education purposes and display and mm-hmm. and understanding and uh you know we were involved in you know various things and um uh, of course veterans groups you know were supported in different ways and they of course supported us you know we worked with other groups as well I know that everything is sort of at a standstill for us now, but we have some very active mothers going. You know, I I can't participate too much anymore, but uh, I I know that mothers are doing a lot. That's great. Mary Jane, did you have anything that you wanted to to add to that idea of ongoing services or support that you're offering uh, to other? Uh, uh, Yes, I did. I wanted to just to say that... um, after uh, we lost Kent, and um, we we felt an urge too that we needed to do something for for others, you know. And so uh, patriotism was big in our in our family and um, love for our country. And so my husband and I decided to do um, maybe flag folding ceremonies for for school children. And so that's how we started. And we um, had all kind of different American flags as they changed, uh, state flags and um, a huge American flag that we did for the main uh, closing of our program and folded it and showed the students uh, how to do it. And um, the history that went on during these change in flags. And um, my husband was very good at that. And um, so we were gone almost for months. We, we could go every day, every other day, I should say, um, and get requests from schools for, to come and visit their students. And the students were very receptive to that. And we were just so happy um, that they were, you know, that then we felt like we were really doing something and um, uh, for the students. So uh, that was a... That was a great program for us, and, and we really loved doing it. Um, uh, so 
I almost forgot to, to add that while ago, but yeah, um, that's great. I'm trying to think if there's anything else um, uh, on that line. I don't think so. I think I think um, we've covered we've covered okay. a, a good area here. Yeah, and well, uh, the mothers were so important to us. Each new mother is so so important to us when they come to us, and we love to have them come to our meetings if they can and see if they enjoy it being around us. And um, if so, then we invite them again to join and um, come to our meetings if they can. Um, and and I feel for them, and I know they feel for us too. We are yeah. all dealing with the same situation. Thank That's you. Great. Yeah, and I I do want to point out that both of you not only have um, committed you know a, a sort of a life of of service to your fellow Gold Star mothers, but like you both illustrated to the larger community, but also to that that organization. You've served not only locally but each of you in in national uh, roles. I believe Mary Jane, you were actually the national president of the American Gold Star Mothers. Was that in two thousand seven, two thousand eight, yeah. maybe? Yes. In 2007 and 2008, I had been on the board for a number of years with uh, serving in different capacities. And um, so um, then I got into um, the presidential uh, part, and it, it, it was wonderful. It was busy. It was, um, it was just something really, really uh, different, uh, something I never thought I would – do or participate in, you know, um, but it was for the year, and um, we had a lot of beautiful ceremonies um, in Washington, D.C. We have a headquarters in Washington, D.C., a beautiful headquarters, and um, um, we would um, have our meetings there and um, uh, all get together, about 12 of us that were on the board, and, and um Susie also served as secretary uh, for a well, while, she'll tell you about, but not at the same time that I was on there. And uh, so we missed that part of it. But um, I had different experiences while I was um, on the board and while I was president, a very, very touching um, ceremony that I attended. Uh, I was invited to come to the Senate building and um, they were celebrating the birthday of um, uh, Mr. Nichols, and Mr. Nichols was um, the oldest World War One veteran still living, and uh, it was his birthday. I think it was a hundred and three or something like that, and um, so I got to meet him, and I was able to present a. Um, medal, the, our commemoration coin to him, and uh, in his very, very soft voice, he reached over and shook my hand, and he said, I know all about the Gold Star Mothers, and uh, that just touched my heart that day, and um, so I kept in touch with him and his daughter, and he lived for about three, four more years in... Um, Oh, let's see, West Virginia, I believe, and um, uh, so that was that was just such a t touching time for me right there, and uh, representing the the organization, and of course there were many many others too, but um, uh, that was yeah. one that I remember so much. That's great. Thank That's you. That's great. Yeah, thanks for sharing that anecdote. Well, uh, I know we're going to take some questions from folks, so if you want to type in any questions that you have, I'm going to ask a final question of both uh, uh, Susie and Mary Jane, and then uh, we'll take some questions from the audience. Um, Susie, maybe you could uh, just share with somebody maybe either a, a favorite memory that you have of Carl uh, growing up or even during his military time, or or perhaps a way that you um, you honor his service and commemorate his life. Uh, today? Well, uh, of course, I have favorite memories, and uh, I think I told you one, but uh, in, in retrospect,
retrospect, I, I think the most precious memory of I have of my son is he he also played the piano, okay? Mm-hmm. And every morning before school, he'd have to run for the school bus. He'd be playing his favorite song, which happened to be Peace on Earth and Morning Has Broken and Hey Jude. And, you know, and when I, when those songs come on, my eyes are wet. But it it, it was, you know, it was just almost every morning I heard those songs and I still miss it. But I think I, you know, I think that's about it. Yeah. (laughs) There were a lot of things, but I think that was most precious. I'm sure. Well, thank you for sharing that. Mary Jane, did you have one uh, little comment you wanted to share a favorite memory of, of Kent or, or how you commemorate yes. or remember him each day? There was uh, several different ones, but uh, this one time uh, he came home from from the service and um, his sister was a te- fourth grade teacher, Kim, and um, he had promised in her that he would come by her class and uh, talked to the students, and he he was very good with children, and um, so he did, and he brought all his um, flight equipment, his helmet, everything that he used while he was flying a jet airplane, and uh, took all that into the to the classroom and spent hours there with them and let them try on some of the some of the uh, pieces of of equipment and. Uh, um, they just had a wonderful time, and my sis, uh, my uh, daughter Kim says that they talked about that for so long, and uh, even now when she sees the students out and they're older, you know, even out of school, they mention something about that visit from okay. her, her brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. It's nice to have the, the legacies, right, those little simple moments yes. that live on for so long. That's uh-huh. great. Well, I, I'm so thankful to each of you for, for joining us and sharing a little bit of your own story and, and that of your sons. Um, if we can, I'm going to try. I think I can click this button here and we'll advance this slide and we'll maybe. There we go. Uh, I, I'll put this up while we take some uh, questions. This is, and I'll kind of read this for you ladies who are, are listening in. This was a, a quote actually found from a a really wonderful book. There's a book that came out just a few years ago about the history of the Gold Star Mothers called That Knock at the Door. And in it, the uh, the author um, uh, published a portion of, a, of a, an essay written by John J. Pershing, of course, the commander of the American Expeditionary Forces in World War I. It was titled Dear War Mothers. Uh, this was published in 1927, and, and he wrote, the bugles are not blowing, the drums of war are not throbbing, Yet a grateful nation needs the gold star mother just as much today as it did then. She cannot be less fearless, less brave, nor less unswerving in devotion to her country than she was 10 years ago. We reach out for her support, her patriotism, her moral grandeur, just as we did in those troublous days. The millions America rushed to arms were not professional soldiers. They were mothers, boys, with the upbringing and the splendid spirit of the dauntless, enlightened women whose blood coursed through their veins. They were as great as any soldier ever assembled under any flag. I just, I read that and I was really moved by that. And I wanted to include that today in in the program. Uh, And it feels like that still uh, echoes a little bit um, today with so many of us. So thank you, uh, Susie and, and Mary Jane. And with that, I think we'll get a little help from Mark to help us um, do some questions if we've got a couple of those that came in. We do not have questions, but I think on behalf of the attendees, uh, certainly myself, uh, the staff here at Soldiers Memorial, um, and just extremely grateful for for everything. Um, I get a little choked up here, but... Um, but just uh, thank you, uh, Susie and Mary Jane, um, not only for your personal sacrifices, but also for the way that you've supported each other 
and have uh, built a community uh, within our community that uh, ensures that those who, um, who, who make the, the sacrifice that you've made have a, uh, have a refuge of friends and a, a circle of companions that they can go to for support um, and to uh, ensure that that uh, continues. So uh, just thank you uh, so much. Um, incredibly grateful uh, in comments coming in about how wonderful the program was and how much was learned and uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. May, I cut, may I cut in while I have a chance and thank you for having us. It means a yes. lot to us. Thank well, you, you so much. You'd certainly always have a home here at Soldiers Memorial. I know the the situation certainly certainly today with COVID nineteen and other things, but uh, mm -hmm. you're not only a, a place in our hearts here, but also a, a place uh, to meet and congregate when that time is is right once again for you. Um, yeah. So, thank you. So this memorial was a very important part of my earlier years. You know, put it that way. You know, and it is definitely now too. But uh, even though I it really haven't made very many visits there lately, and I do miss it. And we thank you. I really thank you for all you've done. It's remarkable to me. And, and thank you for your support. It's truly meaningful. Um, yeah. uh, just to uh, shift gears uh, towards uh, some of the logistics of this uh, today, um, just uh, you will receive that survey. It will come up on your screen uh, if you're interested in, in uh, responding to that. And then also, uh, please be aware that there are more online programs available coming both from the uh, Missouri History Museum and from Soldiers Memorial. So stay tuned for those. I don't know if any of them will be as, as special and meaningful as this one, but uh, we'll keep them uh, at least educational. So thank you uh, so much for tuning in. and. Uh, and thank you for uh, supporting uh, the, the work that we're trying to do here and at the History Museum and the Library Research Center up on the Skinker Boulevard. So thank you, Mike, for uh, leading us through today. And uh, thank you, Mary Jane, and thank you, Susie, for your, your time and your contributions. You're welcome. It was wonderful. Thank you. Very good. It was great. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.